Hi! Welcome to episode 40 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. I'm Laura, also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at The Corner of Knit and Tea, and that's where this episode's show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Stash Buckler Adventures in Yarn, where I sell my hand spun yarns. And finally, we have a group on Ravelry called, you guessed it, The Corner of Knit and Tea. If you haven't come over and joined us, you should. There are some giveaways and some fun things going on in the group. We have a current knit along uh, for spring into summer. Um, if you're knitting anything for the summer, either in colors or in um, uh, yarns, uh, cottons, linens, light things, uh, shawls, socks, anything that you think um, fits a summer prompt, you can go ahead and submit it there, pictures of your finished object, so that um, it will be entered into a drawing for prizes. And I haven't decided on those prizes yet, but please do come join the Ravelry group and join in our summer knit along. So hi! Welcome to episode 40! I have to tell you that um, when I started this, I didn't know that I would get to 40. <laughs> and I'm super excited to be here and a little astonished that I've made it this far. And I appreciate those of you who come back. And to any new viewers, welcome. I hope you enjoy today. Um, we are not quite at the year anniversary yet. That will happen in July. And I need to think about what I might want to do for that. But um, today's episode is really kind of all about friends. And um, I will talk to you a little bit as the episode goes on. I feel like most of the things that I'm gonna um, show in today's episode are things that have been given to me by friends or things that I've been doing with friends. Um, and some of them are people that I know in real life. And some of them are people that I've met through Ravelry and the podcast. And um, I just feel so lucky to know so many wonderful people. And um, so that is kind of going to be a theme of today. I am recording a day early. It is Saturday morning, May 16th, and I do apologize that I that meant that I ended up closing the drawing early, which I will announce later in the podcast. Um, my in-laws are coming today at some point, and I don't actually know exactly how long they're staying, so I wanted to go ahead and record an episode this morning just in case I didn't get a chance to. I didn't want to go without an episode this weekend. Um, I know they have some appointments in Kansas City on Monday, uh, but I don't know if that means they're staying Monday night as well, so I really wasn't sure, so I decided to just go ahead and record today. It has been a pretty good week here. Uh, it has been a little bit overcast and stormy. I think all of the U.S. has seen rain this week. Um, my husband was remarking on the forecast last week that everywhere was going to be touched by rain in a four to five day period in the United States, which is actually kind of rare. Normally we don't all get rain at the same time. Um, we've had a few thunderstorms and it's been kind of humid um, and warm, but it's still been nice enough to get outside. Yesterday I got off work a little bit early and took a two mile walk around the neighborhood um, before the rains came in last night. And another one of the exciting things this week, showing that it's spring, my husband found a nest of robins in the yard. Um, and there are three or four babies in there. We can't exactly tell because even though we've taken a few pictures, we try not to get too close. We don't really want to disturb them or their parents. Um, so I have posted a photo on Instagram, which was kind of exciting. Um, and I will continue to kind of check in on them and take some photos. Uh, I understand that usually the nesting period is pretty short. So we've probably only got the next week or two before they'll actually be grown-up birds and uh, get ready to fly away. So that's a little exciting, something about, I, I really hadn't seen that too much growing up in California, even though we did, we had a huge backyard, um, but I just, it wasn't something that I'd really seen, and so it's kind of neat. So I guess that's about all for little newsy bits, so I will get right into the podcast. Now you'll see what I mean about friends. I am drinking today uh, Taylor's of Harrogate Sweet Rhubarb Tea. And this arrived in the mail this week with an exchange package that I did with uh, Helen. She is Orange Maid on Ravelry and Sprite 966. 
She is um, the one who does the Sprightly Goods podcast. And Helen sent me a lovely package with some minis for my blanket. And then she also sent me this tea and it looked interesting and I opened it up and it smells amazing. So thank you, Helen. This I'm sure this will be enjoyed. And I am drinking in my Dear Karma. I have a list of people you missed mug, which came from Sam Kermit Von Frog of the Come Knit With Us podcast. So like I said already, this is um, a very friendly podcast um, with people that I have met online and in person. So this is rhubarb tea. And that is absolutely delicious. Very fruity, very refreshing. I think it would be interesting iced, but it's delicious hot. And of course I have a huge mug of it because this is a great mug. And I will say, Sam, I like big mugs. So that is what I'm drinking this week. And um, there is actually a website on the back of this. It says Taylor's Tea, whoops, Taylor's Tea.co.uk. And I think I'm actually going to go check that out. But I will also put a link to this tea if it's available online in their show notes. So you can um, get some for yourself if you're interested. But thank you so much, Helen. And thank you, Sam. So that is what I'm drinking this week, sipping. So that brings me to what I am wearing. It is too warm for most knits, but I decided to pull out a shawl. This is the My Hope Shawl, which is by Laura Linneman. Um, she designed a series of shawls, um, some of the proceeds which go to, I can't remember whether it's a charity or to fund um, medical care for her friend's niece. I honestly can't remember, but I do know that a portion of it goes um, to support a good cause. And she designed, um, she had one called My Wish and this one called My Hope. And I really liked the way um, the stitches, you can see that um, it's done with some dropped and uh, s cabled stitches. And it's just really cool looking. Um, I made mine in two if by hand, their merino cashmere nylon blend in Holly Holiday, which is wonderful. Um, pinks and reds and purples with little pops of turquoise. And because of the little pops of turquoise, I decided to um, buy some beads and I did the beaded bind off with the turquoise beads just to give it a little pop. So this is a kind of um, wide semicircular shawl and um, or sort of crescent shaped shawl and I cannot remember if I knit more than the pattern called for. I may have because I had two skeins of the merino cashmere nylon and I wanted to use a lot of them so I may have actually added to the pattern. Um, I don't know if my project would have notes on that or not because I don't always do that. But um, I will put a link to the pattern in the show notes and of course you can always find this on my projects page. So that is what I am wearing today. Which brings me to let's talk about the knits. So first on my list is the baby sweater that I was working on. That is the Chicory Top by Sarah Pope. And I am using, that is in my homespun house alpaca bag which I love, and I am using Unwind Yarn Company Journey Sock um, in the I Want It Now colorway, and again, um, this is not too bad. It looks to me like all the colors of blueberries. There are some kind of pinky purple uh, spots, like you can see right there, that I think look like juice from the blueberries, and then there are all different kinds of blues and purples and violets. Um, and I got to the, um, the sweater is a free pattern, so I don't feel too bad talking about it on, uh, on the podcast. It is knit from the bottom up, and I got to the requisite body, um, inches this week and actually went ahead and cast on for, um, the yoke. So I am moving pretty close towards finished. You can see this is the, oh, it's so hard to show on a podcast when it's a, you know, bottom up little sweater. This is the sweater as it stands. You can see I cast on for the sleeves. I've got the body. It's going to need a really good blocking. Um, it's got this cute little I-cord edging. 
and um, the little uh, stitch count. Hang on two seconds. Let me get myself organized. Okay, there we go. Um, you can see the little um, the little detail stitching on the side, and I am super happy with how this is coming out. I think it's going to be beautiful. I went into my stash, and I found that I have um, a few uh, kind of pearl white buttons, so I think I'm going to use those, and that is um, the chicory top. Links will be in my project notes, and actually I am hoping that I can finish this this week. Um, like I said, it will need a good blocking. It is mostly reverse stockinette, and it is just happy to curl up on itself, but I think with a good washing and blocking, it will um, look great and be super, super cute. And I'll have to get those to to lie down and behave. Um, but yes, I hope to finish this this week and have a finished product to show you next week. And then actually I have another baby sweater to start on because suddenly there are lots of babies coming. So that is project one that I'm working on this week. Project two is my Almus shawl, which is a pattern by Kirsten Kapoor. And um, it is a two color pattern. I showed you I am using Color Pearl, which is an MCN that I got. It's a local dyer to Virginia Beach. Um, and she dyes with natural dyes. This is a cochineal dark cherry. And then the second color that I'm using is Hedgehog Fibers Twist Sock. And actually the most interesting thing is these totally look like the same bases. That is so interesting. I haven't looked at it before. You probably won't be able to tell. No. Not really, um, but they actually look and feel like the same bases even though they're not. Um, this is uh, Hedgehog Fibers Twist Sock in the teacup colorway, which is a cream color with lots of little pops of browns and pinks and even a little bit of blue. And I have made quite a bit of progress on this one. I am closing in on the end of the striped section. Um, which, as you remember, I told you there is a striped section on the top of the shawl and then it is lace on the bottom. And I am, uh, there are a certain number of repeats and I am about one and a half repeats away from being done with the um, top section. So I have made nice progress on this. It is not as big as I would want it to be, but I think that when I um, stretch it out in blocking, it will grow some. So um, I am going to trust in the pattern. That also said, because I don't want to do um, extra math, um, because if I want to keep knitting, then I have to figure out exactly what I have to do to make the lace edging match um, the number of stitches that I have. So like I I said I have about one and a half more repeats on the body and then I will be in on the edging and I actually have a second skein of this one that I'm going to break into so that I can do the lace edging in this one and then actually I was looking at um, a bunch of the Olmuses last night and what a lot of people did was they did the lace edging and then they did an I-cord bind off back in this color. And I think I might actually do that because I think that would be kind of a nice way to set off the edging. So lots of fun things to come. I am sure that I won't finish this one this week, but I should have progress to show you next week. Of course, as it gets bigger and bigger on this needle, um, it will be harder and harder for me to show you. Um, so next week may not be as interesting to look at, um, but I'm, I'm definitely planning to have this one done by the end of the month so that I can submit it to a variety of things, including um, I am doing this one for the shawl knit along in the uh, Kate Hello Knitty Stitch Addiction podcast group. Um, I am going to, if it, well, it probably won't last until June, so I won't be able to do Suburban Stitcher is doing a What's Around Your Neck cow, um, and I have more shawls planned for this summer, so I will probably submit to that. Also, um, Laura Lala from uh, the Knit girls. Uh, well, the Knit Girls are hosting Stash Dash, and that will be opening on May 22nd. So um, this one should be a good contribution for that. And actually, I expect that I will have used um, probably over 800 yards. So that will be a good um, first, first, um, good, strong start to Stash Dash. I think I'm going to try and use 10k yards this summer um, between spinning and knitting. I really think I can pull it off, so I'm gonna try that. 
So that is the second project and it is living in my Ravelry A Daily Dose of Fiber bag, which is another one of my favorites. So that brings me to what else I have been working on. This technically isn't knitting, but I have showed you several times. This is my Cozy Memories blanket. And in the last week, um, I went ahead and added 12 more squares. Um, and this, again, many of these yarns are from friends, and it makes me so excited to, um, to play with this. These are the um, four square the 12 um that i added this week and um to go through them this is some squoosh in the um uh jam colorway it's her sock um and i have a pair of socks out of these this is the blue moon fiber arts um it is socks that rock lightweight and it is in the christmas balls colorway and i know that came from my dear friend kippy this is some yellow, which also came from my friend Kippy, and I believe it is Mama Blue, um, but I don't know the colorway. This is from one of my first pairs of socks, Lorna's Laces, um, Shepherd Sock in the Vera colorway. This is a blue, which was dyed by a friend on Ravelry. Um, I don't know if she's still dyeing yarn. Um, it was a Vampy Fibers. It is a Merino Cashmere Nylon Base, and um, it is the Lagoon colorway. This one is a pair of socks that I knit from yarn that I got when I went to visit the Loopy U for Spring Fling, um, and it is uh, perchance to knit in the Fresh Herbs colorway. This is some wool mice in the Mon Cherie colorway, and I knit my mom, or I wove my mom a scarf out of that. This is some Regia that I got in a Yarnissima. Um, they, she had some uh, samples, and uh, it is one of the ones that came in there. This is a blue from the exchange that I did over at a homespun house, a few of my favorite things, and it is, I believe it is Leading Men Fiber Arts in Legend, and I did an exchange with someone on Ravelry for that. So again, friends contributing. This is another one from the same exchange. Um, this is, I think it's Desert Vista Dye Works and it's one of her brights, and I don't know which colorway it is. Um, this one is green. I don't know what this one is. This is from Kippy again. And this last one, which is pink and brown, is also from Kippy. So, and I am actually tracking on my um, Cozy Memories page um, if I know what yarns these are and also where they come from. So hopefully I will have that um, listed. I am getting pretty far in. I need to actually take a measurement and see. This is not quite as wide as I want it to be, um, but my plan is to just keep going in threes until I get it as wide as I want it to be. And then I haven't decided if I will continue to build in threes or if I'll just um, go like across the row I don't know but it's getting it's getting decent sized I want it to be a little bit um, longer I think probably my wingspan and I'm not quite there yet um, but I am super pleased with this again this is the hexagon how-to tutorial from Lucy 24 of Lucy's attic she um, the patterns are linked on Ravelry and the tutorials are on her website which is fabulous she is um, an amazing crocheter and I love seeing her projects um, so yes, that is my Cozy Memories Blanket coming along. So now it's time for spinning. This week, or last week, I showed you um, a braid of Hello Yarn Shetland in the colorway Scuttle. Oops, I dropped the next fiber, so I'll have to reach down and pick that up in a moment. Um, this is actually still quite wet, so I won't be able to show you too much. It was a beautiful braid. It made me think of cactus colors. Um, pinks like cactus flowers. Um, there were little bits of green and brown and cream and some peaches, and I finished this this week, and it is stunning. Like I said, it is still wet, so it's just not um, showing the best. Um, it still needs a good dry. I actually just plied it up last night, but that is probably a good representation of what the stain looks like. I suspect it will be sport weight, probably 280 to 300 yards, um, and it is nice and crisp, but not, um, not super rough. So Shetland is a little bit of a crisper fiber. 
not quite as soft as the merinos um, but I am just I am super pleased with this it came out just beautifully now this was actually spun on my Ashford Joy I um, did have a good time playing with my mini spinner this week I will have to post more pictures and maybe I'll bring it in here next week um, to show you I am working on a braid that actually was left on it um, when the owner sent it to me it is a pinks um, braid it is some Corgi Hill Farms Polworth silk and it is actually absolutely luscious. Um, it is a gradient colorway which means I will need to Navajo ply it or, or chain ply it which is not one of my preferred methods so I haven't decided yet. Um, there's still kind of a learning curve on the new wheel and I'm I'm really 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 enjoying it. I think I will grow to um, love it but I'm still trying to get my consistent spins on it and um, I find that I'm a little bit more consistent on my joy. So what I've been doing is working on spins that are for others or for the shop on my joy and I'm just kind of playing around on the um, mini spinner. The other thing is that I'm not super good at Navajo plying to begin with. So I haven't decided if I'm going to um, Navajo ply on the wheel that I'm most comfortable with this time or if I'm actually just going to try it on the mini spinner yet. So that um, I might actually finish this week so maybe I will have two finished spins to show you next week. Otherwise let me reach down and pick up the fiber. Ugh. I am planning to spin this week from Deeply Wicked, which is Easy Knits online. Um, and he did some fiber. Um, this was called Berry Blast, and it's Falkland Merino, um, 100 grams. And I actually have two of these, and I think I'm going to spin them together so that I get a massive yardage skein. And this is actually very similarly colored to the baby sweater that I'm doing right now. It is purples and pinks and just all kinds of berry tones. And I think it will be gorgeous. Um, like I said, I think I'm going to spin both of them together. Probably just do a two-ply and um, mix it up so that it will be very barber pulled. But I will have that to show you next week. And unfortunately, the light, um, with the light today, it's not really picking up all the wonderful, well, that's a little bit better, all the wonderful tones in it that are... Um, that are just beautiful. So there will be pictures on the blog of, or pictures on Instagram of this one uh, in various stages through the week, and hopefully I will have that to show you next weekend. So that brings me to the part that you've probably all been waiting for, uh, the drawing. I had offered last week a beautiful skein of hand spun. Like I said, this is, um, this is again a little bit of fun with my friends. The bats were originally carded by Navi of Navi Knits on Etsy or Navi Sama on Instagram and Twitter. Um, he put together the bats and donated them to uh, Kim and Sam of the Come Knit With Us podcast, who gave them away as a prize for their year uh, podcast anniversary, and they, I won them, and so I decided to keep the love going. I spun it up into a squishy, nubbly, kind of textured, a little bit thick and thin uh, skein of yarn that is 198 yards, um, and that what I spun it up for and what I think it will be perfect for is the Handbrake Cowl, which is written by Dan Jones and Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears podcast, and happy podcast anniversary to them this week. The pattern is called Handbrake, <clears throat> and he designed it to put the handbrake on cancer. It is uh, it sells for a pound, and all of the proceeds go to charity. And uh, they are trying to break a thousand pounds, and I'm not sure if their goal is actually fifteen hundred pounds at this point. And at last check, they were up over nine hundred pounds, which is almost fifteen hundred U.S. dollars. So the giveaway is for this beautiful skein of yarn that is uh, touched by all of my friends in, or at least a good chunk of my friends in the podcasting uh, world. Although actually I guess Navi doesn't have a podcast. Okay, it's touched by a lot of my friends and I want to keep the love going. Um, I went ahead and drew, there were 33 entries or there were um, 33 posts in the giveaway thread. Mine was the first, so I ran two through 33 and number 10 came up the lucky winter and that is Alita Casey. So Alita, please send me your information and I will send you the handbrake 
pattern and this beautiful um, yarn and probably a little bit of tea too so that you can knit the handbrake cowl. Um, congratulations! So that is everything that I have for you today. Like I said, I encourage you to come over and check out the Ravelry group. Uh, join us for the spring into summer knit along. Um, I feel like my Almas is very springy and um, I am knitting that baby sweater for a summer baby. So I, um, even though I won't be entering for prizes, I am um, feeling the need to knit all the summery things now. Um, and so I have a bunch of other things coming up that I will be working on um, that I think are spring and summery and I'll be uh, doing a lot of knit alongs this summer and uh, trying to get uh, my friends and I joke particularly about the Harry Potter house um, cup which I am also involved in that we are knitting for imaginary internet points so um, you're also knitting for chances to win prizes um, but but we love the imaginary internet points and if you give me a contest for how much yardage can I knit or those kinds of things um, I will definitely participate so thank you for spending this approximately half an hour with me today. I hope you've enjoyed it and I really thank you for joining me and again I just want to say thank you to all of my wonderful friends, um, those of you I've exchanged with either messages or sweet packages or tea recommendations, um, those of you who have contributed to my cozy memories blanket. Um, I just this is such a wonderful community and um, I appreciate my friends so much and I'm so excited to have met you um, through Ravelry and through the podcast. So take care and until I see you again, I will say as I always say, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye!